Welcome back to Data Driven Engineering. In this final module of the seven on accessing data, we're going to be talking about web scraping and how to get information that's on these servers, uh, you know, and do it this with a computer. So you don't have to go and download something, but you can have your Python script automatically be able to retrieve that information. That might happen every day as you create a report and need input from some of these other services or web services um, that are out there. And you want to be able to automate that, the retrieval of data that comes in. So let's go ahead and go to this uh, GitHub link. And this one is the one I'm going to download. I'll right click here, save link as, and I'll save it as this IPython notebook. Or you can come here and go to Google Colab and run everything uh, through a web interface without installing Python. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. Uh, now we're going to go into this uh, Jupyter Notebook. And we just want to download an image as the very first thing. So I'm going to move this over just a little bit so I can see things as they appear here on the left. And let's go ahead and just use URL lib request. And we're going to download an image. We'll download this Python web scrape from that web page that I just showed you. All right, and there's uh, URL lib retrieve. All right, and it downloaded the header right here. If I save image as, I could have done this myself, uh, but I had Python do it for me, and it downloaded this image that is at the top of the web page. All right, so we first of all, this is the first activity, we just uh, practice downloading an image from a website. Now, there's also <clears throat> pa packages for image manipulation, um, and OpenCV, and others, so you can, um, you know, import and display images with one of these, or you can just do it with matplotlib as well. So let's say you uh, downloaded something and you want to be able to display it here. The nice thing about matplotlib is it does show you the pixels and uh, you know where they're located with these uh, with these images. Okay, so let's go ahead and read tables now. A lot of the information that's useful out there is, is going to be stored in tables or ways that are structured that we can extract automatically. So here's a table, and I'll just come here. The table is located right here on this web page. And this is the one that we want to be able to extract and be able to import into Python. All right, so let's go ahead and read this with the read HTML. All right, here's a URL, and I'll read it HTML and get the data. All right, now sometimes if you have an HTTPS, you're going to get an error that, you know, the certificate wasn't found. So if that happens, then you import requests, and then, um, then you can go with... Uh, uh, request we're gonna go ahead and just do req equals request and then we're gonna get the URL okay all right and then here we're gonna do req dot content okay let's see request okay req I think I messed something up here let's see if that's get there it is okay so I just needed the dot get from the requests, and if the, it gives you a problem, you can also say verify equals false. And then it'll give you this warning that says, well, you really should verify with a certificate, but if that's a problem and you need to get around it, just use the verify equals false. It'll just give you a warning there. Okay, so that's a better way to, to access this if you have the S there. But in this case, this website allows you to do HTTPS, or HTTP. Okay, and there you can see the table that was on that website is now transferred into Python as a data frame. And so you can do things like head or others. You can see that I can now modify this table and I've imported it. Now, um, I can also set the index as time, for example. All right, so I've set that as my index of my table. Now you can also read the table with requests as I showed already. Okay, and you can make it look like a web browser as well. 
So this is nice because there are many websites that want to prevent you from accessing their data and they will look for things like lack of a header. So if you just add this, then you'll be able to pass the checks that say, hey, is this a browser? And then you can say headers equals header. Okay, and then we can read HTML, we can do r.text. All right, and then we'll set index equals uh, set index to time. All right, so that's another way to access it. So you make um, the request, you make the request look like uh, a, that it was accessed from a browser. Okay, let's go to Beautiful Soup. This is another package. There are many other packages for web scraping. Uh, this is one of the popular ones, the Beautiful Soup 4. Okay, I will import requests and I'll have a URL and we'll get a page. And so that's our very first thing. We'll get a page and then we'll use the page content. We'll import beautiful soup. Okay, and soup equals beautiful soup. And we'll use uh, extract the page content with our html.parser. Okay, so some, some, uh, <coughs> there's functions such as soup.prettify. Okay. Uh, it can be used to view the structured output or the title page, or you can do things like uh, soup.title.text. Okay, but if we did something like um, soup.prettify, okay, it's going to make it just a little easier to read if you want to go through it um, yourself. Okay, and see some of the content and the tags that are there. All right, but if you just want to get this particular thing like the title. Um, then you use this. Okay, so let's extract all the links from this web page as well. There are quite a few links that are here. You know, for example, these right here. Maybe we want to just extract all of the links from that page. So for link in soup, find all. So we're going to find A uh, because in HTML, A and href, um, it will give us the links. And so we'll get the link text and we'll get the href the the um, hyperlink reference okay so here we have all of the links with the text that was there web scraping web scrape okay there's a google collab link as well uh, there's a git code okay if we want to come here and see the code for that so many of these you know, all of these links are on that web page and we were able to extract them automatically all right, so Pandas uses uh, Beautiful Soup to extract tables from web pages. Um, and, um, you know, so data scraping, it's particularly useful, so, you know, for things like weather, stock data, customer reviews, and more advanced uh, scraping packages are like Mechanical Soup, Scrappy, and Selenium. Okay, actually, I'm not sure if Panda uses, Pandas uses Beautiful Soup. Uh, I don't remember seeing that as a dependency. Anyway, so that might be wrong right there. Okay, but let's do an activity here. We're going to practice some web scraping to, ret to retrieve data from another website of interest that contains a table. We'll organize the content into a data frame and export the data frame to a CSV file. And so uh, let's go ahead and do an example of data. Okay, so here we have Wikipedia. There's a table of information. And we're just going to have data. Okay, and this one's going to give an error. Because again, uh, because of the certificate, it says, um, let me come down here to the bottom. Um, okay, SSL certificate. You can install a package that does the certificates for you, or you could just use the requests. Okay, so let's just modify this. So instead of this right here, okay, let's go ahead and um, do this with the requests. Okay, so URL will first of all pass it in with the request.get and then request.content and we'll just get the very first table that's there. Okay, which is the zero right there. And then we'll go to CSV file. So if we run that, then we can see here is a table that was at that link. Let's just open this up. This is a Wikipedia article about tables. 
All right, so here's our table right here that we just extracted. You could have gotten that one instead if you did the next one, but here's the CSV file that it exported, and we're just going to open up that with Microsoft Excel. All right, so here is the table that we have, and that is also, okay, we can also view this with something like a notepad editor. There's our same table. Okay, so let's come back here and do one more. Okay, so one of interest. This was an example here. Maybe you're interested in the World Cup, for example, and uh, statistics surrounding the World Cup. Let's go ahead and just create a tables directory, uh, you know, a folder so we can put our results in there. And we want to be able to look at this uh, FIFA World Cup address okay maybe we want to extract all of the tables from this one so this one's going to show one that's just a little bit more complex than the others there are going to be many tables in this article right here of the winners of uh, you know the countries and um, you know so here's a couple different tables that are located and uh, you know some pretty complex information maybe you wanted to export some of this um, and be able to update it every four years, okay, when the World Cup is played. So um, let's come back here and just save these. We're going to request, we'll get the URL, and then we'll read the content from those. And then for all of the tables, so instead of just putting a zero here at the end and just getting the first one, let's get all of them. And we'll say, let's print you know, which table it is. And we'll print just the first three rows of that table and then save it to a CSV file. Okay, so here we have, um, let's see, I need request.content here. Okay, so I went ahead and saved it. Okay, and there you can see all of the different tables that were saved. And let's just see how many tables are on that page. All right, so we got all 39 of the tables that were on that page here stored as CSV files. So uh, this is just a brief primer on web scraping. Again, uh, many nice tools that you can use. I like to use pandas uh, just because a lot of the information that I typically extract is in the form of a table that I want to, uh, you know, get some data off of. But again, you can get, you know, audio files, video. Um, you know, there's many other types of files that you can get and automatically download with uh, Python. Now, um, how is how is some of this data used? You see a lot of uh, web scraping that happens, and typically, um, you know, website administrators do not like web scraping. You saw that from the headers. You know, if, if you aren't able to identify a header on there, then they're going to block you. And a lot of times in the website terms of use, they'll give details about when it's allowed and when it isn't allowed. So I would recommend instead of using, you know, a program that's going to overload a server and make the server administrator upset that you're taking their data or overloading their services, um, you know, if it's against the policy to, to web scrape, then, uh, you know, contact the website administrator, get permission to do the web scraping. So, uh, you know, examples of web scrapers commonly happens or search engines generally go through and, and uh, you know, periodically survey uh, websites to be able to extract information. You see things like, um, you know, some of the large language models, and how they're created, they had to also scrape, you know, maybe from things like uh, Stack Overflow. And, uh, you know, this is an example of, um, you know, some of the questions that are about the Gecko tag. So if it wanted to learn Gecko, it would have to scrape a lot of these uh, questions and answers, you know, like what is the accepted answer? Um, what is the right answer in this case? And then what what's some of the code that would answer that question? And so those then are trained based on scraped data that it was able to collect from, you know, large resources that it had to collect and go out and, and curate and scan those and import them. 
So anyway, web content is typically set up for humans to access through a browser, but if you can develop a program, you can also do that with Python and be able to automate some of the import and curation of data that's available out there on the web. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, this concludes, this is number seven in data access. We also had the Python overview earlier, and next we're gonna be going on to data transfer time series, and then uh, reviewing some of the data engineering, and then also more applications that we'll be adding in the future.